Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of News Dose, where I give you all of the latest news in the game industry. And today I have a very special episode for you because I'm going to recap the entire XO19 Xbox conference. And let me tell you right away, this was an amazing stream. This actually was probably better than E3, and they had a ton of stuff to show. But let's get right into the announcements, and I'll try to keep this as short as possible. It was an hour and 30 minutes long, so I won't go into any great length on any specific video game like I usually do to save some time. Nonetheless, they started off the conference by showing Rare's new IP Everwild, and this game looks both very creative and beautiful. It was actually quite breathtaking, and even though we don't know too much about it right now, there is a few things we can take away from this trailer. You do see this one very detailed character, so I think it is a single player experience, but you also have some other characters alongside you, so I think it's possible it may be co-op as well. Or maybe it could just be other AI characters. But you also notice they're doing a lot of sneaking around, so I feel like there is going to be some kind of stealth element to this game. And then we also see an enemy creature, which looked kind of like a wolf, but we didn't see combat. Now one other thing I did notice is you do see the protagonist climbing up the small rock, and I wonder if it has a climbing mechanic similar to something like Zelda Breath of the Wild. Just a few things to note, but truly I do feel Everwild has a lot of potential. Now the next game they announced was another new IP, but this time from Obsidian Entertainment, and it's a little on the smaller side of things. It is a survival RPG made by 13 developers, so it really is on the smaller side of things, and goes by the name of Grounded. You basically are a miniature person that is exploring the world in a whole new way. Because you're so small, even insects can be incredibly dangerous. It will be out this spring of 2020, available for Xbox Game Pass Day 1. After Grounded was shown, they moved on to first party studio head, Matt Booty. I don't know what you're probably thinking in that he'll be announcing more studio acquisitions, though he did not do that at XO19. Instead, he did say that Xbox Game Studios will be transitioning from growth to execution. What this means is that the acquisition spree may possibly be over. Now, of course, Phil Spencer at one point in time did say that they are looking for an Asian studio, so maybe they are looking periodically, but I don't think it's going to be some huge spree like we've seen in previous years. However, if you do look at each studio closely, they really have been growing them all with a lot of new job opportunities, and this really goes to almost every single Xbox game studio, and it seems to really be paying off now. Now, I'm going to go through these next few games relatively quick. West of Dead was shown, and it looks kind of like a western twin stick shooter with some dungeon crawling in it. I actually think it looks pretty good, and the beta is available today on Xbox One. Then the hit survival game Rust was announced for Xbox, and this game has a bit of a love-hate relationship with its fans. If you've played games like Ark Survival Evolved, you kind of know what you're getting into. Rust will be available in 2020. And then this next game actually looked surprisingly very good, especially for a free-to-play game. It's Cart Rider Drift, and apparently it's been around for a while and has like 300 million players. I, I've never even heard of this game, but it looks really good. It also will be a timed exclusive for Xbox One, and it has crossplay with PC. I don't know about you, but I'm a big fan of kart racing games, so I'm going to have to check this one out. After that, they revealed the release date for their Xbox Studio game, Bleeding Edge, which will be available March 24th. They did show a new character, and I have to say, Bleeding Edge has a lot of personality to it. This new character that they showed is kind of running around like an ostrich or a velociraptor from Jurassic Park. It just looks really good in motion. Really, the entire trailer they showed today for Bleeding Edge was oozing with personality for each and every single character. And of course, since this is being developed by Ninja Theory, it will be on Xbox Game Pass Day 1. They also announced Planet Coaster, the console edition, and this game has been around for a little while now on the PC, and it's actually supposed to be quite good. It does have an 84 on Metacritic after all, and even though I'm not really a big fan of these type of games, I do know that a lot of people like them, so this is good news for them. Now this next game is both very exciting and very surprising. See, I didn't hear any kind of rumors about this game, but Xbox Game Studios partnered up with the Life is Strange developer Don't Nod to make a brand new title, Tell Me Why. 
This is an Xbox Studios game, so it will be an Xbox exclusive, but it does seem to be another click and adventure game like Life is Strange. It's a little bit more realistic looking than Life is Strange though, and the art style actually looks very good. The story sounds intriguing, but the cool thing about all this was that it will be releasing all chapters summer of 2020. That I absolutely love. I never really buy into chapter games day one because they have a tendency of taking far too long to release each episode, so I definitely appreciate that all of this will be coming this summer. This next game though was a little bit more on the strange side of things, which was The Artful Escape. It's like some 2D platformer and you see the protagonist carry around his guitar and kind of go through all these various different environments. It's a little bit strange, but that's okay. I like to see unique games like this from time to time. Though I will say that a change of pace would be nice because we got a little bit more information on Project xCloud after hearing about so many games. Though we still have a ton of games to talk about, but yes, xCloud was talked about and we got some new juicy information. xCloud will be expanding to have over 50 plus titles, which is up from the 4 or 5 they previously announced, and this does include a new partnership with EA. So EA will be releasing Madden 2020, as well as three other unannounced games. Project xCloud will also be expanding to Canada, Western Europe, Japan, and India. That's a pretty massive expansion, though I'm very much liking it. They're really starting to get it into more people's hands now, so it will truly be going through a beta test. And lastly, and this is the biggest news here, they will be adding game streaming to Xbox Game Pass. So that would mean that Xbox Game Pass members will be able to play on their phone, tablet, or PC via Project X Cloud. That's such a big announcement and it makes Xbox Game Pass even better than it already was. And that isn't even the end of Xbox Game Pass announcements, it gets way better. Because immediately after all this xCloud stuff, they dropped a megaton announcing Yakuza 0, Yakuza Kiwami, and Kiwami 2 for the Xbox, and on top of that, Xbox Game Pass Day 1. That is such a huge announcement, and for all of you Xbox fans that have been wanting to see more Japanese games on the Xbox, this is a big get. They then announced Drake Hollow, which is a very cute little game. It almost kind of reminds me of Narnia, and it seems that the protagonist goes to another world and gets to see all these interesting fantasy creatures. It does appear to be a survival game, possibly, with four-player co-op. This one looks really cool to me, so I'm looking forward to seeing more of this. Halo Reach was also announced to be coming to Xbox and Steam on December 3rd. That's of course big news for Halo fans, and I'm sure a lot of people will be looking forward to going back to the prequel, Halo Reach. They also showed an extended look to Flight Simulator. It looks absolutely gorgeous, though I don't really know enough about planes to talk about it too much. I never played the original Flight Simulator, but wow, this game does look breathtaking. Possibly the best looking game I've ever seen in all honesty. And then finally, we got to see gameplay footage of Age of Empires 4. Now this game was announced a few years ago, so people have kind of been waiting around anxiously for this game, and this is a very popular game, especially on PC. But after all of this waiting, it did not disappoint. It looks really good. They did reveal it as a medieval game featuring Mongols and the English. Pretty cool setting if you ask me, and they even revealed their studio name, which is World's Edge Studio. Now this next game, Crossfire X, is a game that I haven't really been paying much attention to by this point. I know it's an immensely popular game, but I never paid attention to it, or at least until today. Because they showed gameplay of this game, and it looks stunningly good. It's free to play, offers a ton of game modes apparently, and will be an Xbox exclusive. Honestly, if you like first-person military shooters, this might be a great game to watch out for. Annapurna was also there to show off a new game which is actually developed by the Virginia developer. And that's the thing about this game. The Last Stop looks like it will have a very enticing storyline, just like Virginia. I wasn't really digging the art style per se, but it may grow on me, not too sure on that one. What I'm most interested though is the story, because it actually sounds really good. See, XO19 so far has been really good, but it wouldn't be an Xbox conference without their biggest IP. And no, I'm not really talking about Halo here. 
but rather Minecraft, and their new game, Minecraft Dungeons, is really shaping up to look like a legitimately good dungeon crawler. But one thing especially caught my attention when it came to Minecraft Dungeon, which was that there is no classes. Rather, you are what you wear, and this means if you find wizard armor, you become a wizard. It sounds pretty interesting on paper. They also did say that the difficulty is adaptable, which means that if you're playing in co-op, it will become more difficult. I like that personally, but I like challenging games. Minecraft Dungeons got a release date for April and will debut in Xbox Game Pass. And speaking of Xbox Game Pass, a bunch of Final Fantasy games was announced for Xbox and Xbox Game Pass. This includes Final Fantasy 7, 8, 9, 10, 13, and 15. Such an amazing franchise, all available on Xbox Game Pass. That wasn't the only thing that Square Enix announced though, as they also revealed that the Kingdom Hearts Collection is coming to Xbox and has a demo available today. That is huge news as you can now play the entire Kingdom Hearts franchise on Xbox. Immediately after this, they showed a ton of Xbox Game Pass games, and I'll include a picture here to show you some of them, but they did show some ID Xbox games as well, which these are indie games, and all of them will be available on Xbox Game Pass day one. It was a massive announcement and a huge list of games that will be included in Xbox Game Pass. I can tell you right now that some of these games are really good too. Of course, you have The Witcher 3 and Talos Principle, but there is this game, Superland, and I'll say right now, it's a hidden gem. I actually played it on PC earlier this year. It's very good. It's like a Metroidvania 3D platformer, so I really encourage you to try that out when it comes out. Also, Chris Tell, it's been on my radar for a while now. Definitely very excited to play that one. Xbox Game Pass is just absurdly amazing, and no, nothing else can be said. And then after the huge Xbox Game Pass announcement, they wrapped up the show with Wasteland 3, where NXL talks about how Microsoft has helped them improve the game with a ton of voice acting and other features. And honestly, it's looking really good. I think if you're a fan of Wasteland, this may be the best Wasteland yet. And that right there sums up this entire conference. This was an amazing conference and one of the best I've seen in recent years. But that is it. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I do, but let me know what you thought about XO19 in the comments below. If you liked the video though, don't forget to hit that bell notification and subscribe button. Peace out.